We're here on 11 Love VC Firm, episode 9, with Rick Sinclair, CEO of uh, Valor Imports. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Doing great. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Yep. So tell me a little bit about Valor Imports and what you guys do. Ah, Valor It. Valor It. Uh, Valor It. We make importing simple and easy. Um, so the import export uh, market from America is worth about five point six trillion dollars, um, and the Caribbean is going through a major digital transformation right now. Or let me say, Latin America is going through a major digital transformation, and so Valor it is uh, helping and aiding to make the import export process simple, easy, fast, and fun. Right. So let's tell us a little bit about your background and uh, where you come from and how you got started. Sure. Uh, I started out, uh, my background is in logistics, transportation, and distribution. I started out as a production stage manager for theater, um, touring left and um, east coast to west coast, uh, transporting lighting equipment, sound boards, people, things, highly perishable, valuable items. Um, and then I got to New York. Uh, my last show was at the world famous Apollo theater. And I said, you know, I'm either going to stay here and I'm going to be in New York and I'm going to be poor and it's going to be great. Or <laughs> I could find my passion in life. So I went back to school. I did uh, uh, got my undergrad in organizational and corporate communications, studied abroad in India, and got my master's in project management, and was able to formalize a lot of my technical education with my logistics experience, and created an import-export business, um, a digital import-export business. And so now we're Valor It. Awesome. And how was your experience in India? And where? In India. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we went to Dehradun, Dera Masala, uh, uh, Delhi. Um, we studied in Jaipur in the pink city. We got to see a lot of the ancient architectural um, uh, like phenomenons, got to go to the Taj Mahal. It was an incredible life-changing experience. Awesome. So how did you get started with Valori, like with the project and becoming a founder? Yeah. So originally the opportunity began from a chance to bring a, a wine, a vineyard, a wine from Argentina into the States. Uh, so we started out as Valor Imports. Uh, through research and development, came to find out that really the market for opportunity is in exporting American products to Latin America. So then uh, fast forward to most recently to COVID, um, as the quarantine went on, people began their mind shift suddenly changed to where they they suddenly realized that they needed digital products and services in a major way. And so we upgraded from Valor Imports to Valor It to make importing easy. We're not just focused on food and beverages. Well, now we're focused on a marion of events and services that, oh, excuse me, I said events, excuse me, products and services that, <laughs> that fit the need of the small business owner of Latin America. And how has it been with, uh, with regulations of alcohol in, co in comparison to the United States and Latin America? Ironically enough, although alcohol is the most heavily, com uh, most regulated commodity on the planet, inside of America, we have the three tier system. Uh, so we have your county laws, your state laws, and your federal laws regarding alcohol. However, Taking alcohol outside of the country is so much easier. It, um, other countries don't have the three-tier alcohol system. They want 
products to come in. And because they, they, depending upon the island or where they are, um, they import 90% of their materials anyway. So it, it kind of wouldn't make sense for them to have too many regulations on imports. Um, and so we are joining forces with uh, the World Bank and Caribbean Hotel Trade Association, helping small businesses recover some of the revenue lost during quarantine. Right. And how has it been as a founder, like going through different challenges and different bumps in the road and scaling this business? Uh, it's been pretty horrible. Yeah. Um Generally, I can't tell you how many times investors uh, or important people will walk into a room and assume that I don't, I'm not ready, or they'll assume that I don't have a business plan without asking. They'll just tell me, you don't have a business plan. You don't have financial projections. You don't have blase, blase, blase. But they don't ask questions. They just walk in and tell, they look at me. And then they tell me that I don't have it. Um, In some cases, I've actually, you know, my name is Brooke. Uh, It is not necessarily a black name. And I sound like a white girl on the phone. So I've had uh, quite a few instances where I've walked in and investors or important contacts would say, oh, you're Brooke? Oh, okay. Well, that spot is no longer available or that opportunity, we finished it. Or, you know, uh, maybe go get a bank loan because it's not really investable. Um, yeah. Where it was totally investable over the phone. Right. Mm. And like, how do you deal with that mentally? How do you move forward and, you know, continue to look for investors and what type of investors are you looking for? How do I mentally move forward? I keep in, I remind myself why I'm in this to begin with. Um, I am not necessarily doing this just for me so I can have a better life. Although, yes, of course. Um, However, I'm doing this for the men and women of STEM who look like me throughout the country, who are fighting to be heard. And I'm in this work for the little black girls of Chicago, where I'm originally from, uh, who may not know that there is more to life than what they see around them. They need to have dreams, they need to have examples, they need to have representation. And so I am standing up for them. So I need an investor who can understand that and can work with me. I need an investor who has maybe started a company and failed or succeeded either way. Um, Preferably right now, I'm noticing that investors who look like me are a better fit for me. Um, and my and for the region of which we're going, so Latin America is filled with different color, wonderful brown people of many different backgrounds and demographic and cultures. Um, and so I'm realizing that a fair skinned venture capitalist is maybe not the best fit for me for right now. Mm-hmm. And what advice would you give, you know, to that little girl from Chicago looking to get into STEM, um, or someone that's looking to be a founder, or looking to, you know, be in this type of space or industry? What would you say to that little girl? Um, for the little brown girls from Chicago who don't know that STEM is accessible to them, I say to you, do not give up hope. Um, I say to you, keep pushing. And for those adults who look like me, and I'm going to, I'm going to say this strategically, I'm going to say, don't do it. 
And I say that because if you're anything like me and you hear that something is hard and uh, challenging, but yet promises billion dollar revenues in the future, then you're going to hear that and you're going to say, you know what, that's exactly the thing I want to do. Just because she said, don't do it. I'm going to go do it. So, (laughs) Otherwise, jump right in. (laughs) Yeah, make it your own. Um, and we, we, you talked about investors, how is like raising capital and um, going through different rounds been for you? It's been horrible. Yeah. Um, I, I never knew how important quality was before now. It, um, I've had more doubters and haters, I've had people who have seen me pitch and seen me pitch well, but instead of giving me feedback that was, you know, critiques that would help me to learn to be better, they tell you things like, you're not ready, you don't have the experience, you don't know what you're talking about, uh, and really try to make me feel as though I was less than. And I can tell you that there are more people out there. There are more haters who will try to make you feel like you're not worth this journey than there are people who will try to uplift you. So be strong. And in the VC space, what do you think is lacking or needs to change moving forward? In the VC space, we need more Black 